meeting is called to order. Welcome to your City Commission regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. The Lovemore City Commission meeting will be open to the public with limited seating capacity. To reserve a seat, email cwilliamson at firstcity.org no later than 4 p.m. on October 13th. Seats will be available on a first come, first serve basis. To mitigate the spread of COVID-19, face coverings and social distancing are required to attend the meeting. In accordance with Kansas Open Meetings Act, the meeting can be viewed on Channel 2 and via Facebook Live. The public is encouraged to continue to view the meeting via Facebook Live or Channel 2 and to submit public comments to be read during the public comments portion of the meeting and questions on agenda items to be read during discussion on that topic. Submit your comments or questions to C. Williamson at firstcity.org no later than 6 p.m. on October 13th for call in options related to comment, commenting on agenda items. Submit your inquiry to C. Williamson at firstcity.org. Uh, I'd like everyone to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a silent meditation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. in the category of presentations and proclamations and I do have three proclamations to read tonight. The first one is on Domestic Violence Awareness Month. City of Leavenworth, Kansas. Proclamation. Whereas one in every four women will experience domestic violence during her lifetime with approximately 15.5 million children exposed to domestic violence every year and whereas when a family member is abused, it can have long-term damaging effects on the victim that also leaves a mark on family, friends, and the community at large. And whereas domestic violence is widespread and is devastating to society as a whole, and the problem crosses all economic, racial, gender, educational, religious, and societal barriers, and whereas the crime of domestic violence violates an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity due to the systemic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control or abuse. And whereas victims should have help to find the compassion, comfort, and healing they need with access to medical and legal services, counseling, transitional housing so that they can escape the cycle of abuse and domestic abusers should be punished to the full extent of the law. And whereas we encourage domestic violence victims and their families to seek assistance from the Alliance Against Family Violence, Hotline 913-675-7217. And whereas it is important to recognize the compassion and dedication of the individuals who provide services to victims of domestic violence. And whereas the United States President, Congress, and other agencies have expressed that commitment to eliminating domestic violence. And we must dedicate ourselves to protect vulnerable members of our society with local programs, state coalitions, national organizations and other agencies to increase public awareness of domestic violence and to eliminate it through prevention and education. Now, therefore, I'm Iron J. Mike Griswold, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim the month of October 2020 as Domex Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge all the people of Leavenworth, Kansas to work towards the elimination of domestic violence. In witness whereof, I set my hand and have affixed the great seal of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 13th day of October in the year of 2020. The next uh, proclamation is for Food Day, October 4th, 2020. Food Day, uh, well, I guess it's October 16th. Uh, 2020 connects us to real food, which is local, healthy, and sustainable and challenges members of the community to eat real, whether it is one ingredient, one meal, all day, or every day. And whereas Food Day, October 16, 2020, educates and inspires the greater Kansas City community to create a stronger, healthier, more accessible, more sustainable local food system. And whereas the health and well-being of our citizens is a primary concern for the city of Leavenworth, reducing obesity and diet-related diseases by 
promoting safe and healthy diets is a critical factor in improving citizens' overall health. And whereas supporting sustainable family farms and local agriculture benefits the local community, and whereas obtaining fair pay and safe conditions for food and farm workers is beneficial for both the producer and consumer, so that the food we produce and consume is safe and fair for all, and whereas expanding access to real food to those who live in food deserts is critical to alleviating hunger, curbing junk food marketing aimed at children is vitally important in order to combat rising obesity rates and raise a generation of healthy children. And whereas the Leavenworth Farmers Market has adopted the double UP program to provide for healthful eating for members of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program by matching their purchases of fresh produce up to $25. And whereas protecting the health of the environment and farm animals is necessary to sustain future generations, now therefore I, Myron J. Mike Rizzo, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim October 16th, 2020 to be Food Day in the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, and I urge all citizens to participate in the activities planned here forth and published at www.fooddaykc.org. In witness whereof, I set my hand and have affixed the great seal of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 13th day of October in the year of 2020. The third and the last proclamation is for the National Arts and Humanities Month. Proclamation, whereas National Arts and Humanities Month is a time for communities to come together in a unified celebration of the power of the arts to make a difference and change our lives for the better. In this turbulent year, the arts and humanities have played an important role in getting us through the COVID-19 pandemic and amplifying the need for racial equity and whereas Leavenworth Main Street recognizes the power of public art and commissioned a large mural on the side of the building located at 416 Cherokee Street, which was well accepted and draws folks in for photographs and conversation on social media reaching folks around the world. And whereas Leavenworth Main Street encourages additional public art within the downtown community as a way to enhance tourism and discovery of historical downtown Leavenworth while providing positive and creative public art. And whereas Leavenworth Main Street created the Shawnee Art Walk to showcase downtown Leavenworth's existing public art from sculpture to murals to ghost signs, Shawnee Street offers visitors 11 locations from Esplanade to Broadway to visit. And whereas Leavenworth Main Street is currently hosting the first city passageway projects with it, wherein local and regional artists paint on existing passageways as they view what's inside as the door or window is open. And whereas public art can instill history, hope, creativity, humor, and be thought provoking, while offering positivity and interaction among all ages. Now, therefore, I, Myron J. Mike Griswold, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, here, hereby proclaim October 2020 to be National Arts and Humanities Month. In witness whereof, I set my hand and have fixed the great seal of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 13th day of October in the year of 2020. So that completes our proclamations, and we'll get those proclamations to the, the, the appropriate organizations. New employee welcome, and uh, we don't unfortunately have any new employees here but today because of the number that we're going to uh, welcome, but let me go there now, and I'm going to welcome these individuals to the, uh, to the city of Leavenworth. They have been recently hired in the last weeks or months, and we've established a program of welcoming new employees to the city team. As part of this program, each new employee will be announced and introduced by the mayor, at a regular meeting of the Leavenworth City Commission. Each employee will also be presented with a welcome card and City of Leavenworth pin from the, their department. Brief background information of each employee listed below um, is, is attached. And I will go ahead and just say a few words about each of them and we'll certainly get them their welcome cards and their City of Leavenworth pin um, coming up here in the, next, uh, in the next few days. So the first gentleman is Joseph Jacobson. Joe was hired on February 20. 20th, 2020, as a park technician one, he graduated from Lansing High School. He was previously employed with J&J Construction as a laborer. Tyreek Ford. Tyreek was hired on March 26, 2020, as a WPC operator one. He graduated from Leavenworth High School. He was previously employed with Amazon as a warehouse associate. 
Barrett Damron. Barrett was hired on July 9, 2020 as a traffic control technician. He graduated from Livermore High School. His previous work experience with, was with Prosico as a warehouse specialist. Antion Powell. Antion was hired on July 9, 2020 as a police officer. He graduated from Huffman High School. He previously worked for BSNF Railway as a locomotive engineer. John Marshall. John was hired on July 16, 2020 as a streets equipment operator and transferred to Stormwater Equipment Operator 1 on August 20th, 2020. He went to Leavenworth High School and received his GED. He previously worked at Geiger ReadyMix and retired from the City of Leavenworth Fire Department in 2017. Dion DePaulis. Dion was hired on July 23rd, 2020 as a firefighter. Graduated from Lansing High School. He previously worked for Wilcott Woodworks and Jeff Wagner Construction as a laborer. Joseph Dill. Joseph was hired on Jan July 23rd, 2020 as a firefighter. He graduated from Lansing High School. His previous work experience was with Leavenworth Fire District 1 as a firefighter. Austin White. Austin was hired on July 23rd, 2020 as a firefighter. He graduated from Leavenworth High School. He previously worked with J.F. Denny as an apprentice. John Burkhart. John was hired on July 23rd, 2020 as a firefighter. He graduated from St. Thomas Aquinas High School. He was previously employed with Sierra Building Products as a delivery man and warehouse worker. John also worked as a volunteer firefighter with the Eudora Fire Department. Brian McKeegan. Brian was hired on August 6, 2020 as a solid waste laborer. He graduated from Leavenworth High School. He previously worked for Integrity Tree Service as a laborer. Samuel Lowe II. Samuel was hired on July 20th, 2020 as a WPC Operator 1. He graduated from Lansing High School. He previously worked for the City of Bonner Springs as a meter maintenance supervisor. So as the mayor and on behalf of my fellow commissioners here in the City of Leavenworth, I welcome all the new employees to the City of Leavenworth. You're joining a very strong and dedicated team, and I wish you the very best in the weeks and months and hopefully years to come. The next uh, agenda item are the minutes from our last regular uh, City Commission meeting dated uh, September 22, 2020. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners on the, on the minutes? If not, I will uh, accept the motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the minutes Mayor. from September 22, 2020 regular meeting. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard, can I have a second? I second. Okay. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes from our September 22nd, 2020 regular meeting. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger. Aye. And I, as the mayor, vote aye. The ayes have it. Five to zero. The motion carries, so we've approved the minutes from our September 22nd, 2020 regular meeting. Next agenda item, uh, oh, public comment. Uh, any public comment, any comments from the public, um, Ms. Williamson? No. Okay, so uh, no public comments. Uh, this is the first, that was the first agenda item under new business. Next, public hearings. And the first public hearing is uh, on a subject petition to vacate 6th Street Metropolitan Avenue to Cheyenne Street. Do I have a motion to open a public hearing? So moved. So moved, Commissioner Wilson. Okay, I need a second. Second, Commissioner Bowder. Okay, there's a motion and a second to open a public hearing. Um, we are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger. Aye. And I, as a mayor, vote aye. The ayes have it. Uh, <coughs> Five to zero, the motion carries. So we are now in a public hearing to discuss vacating 6th Street Metropolitan Avenue to Cheyenne Street. Uh, Mr. Kramer? Mr. Mayor and Commission, I will start briefly with this item and turn it over to our Public Works Director, Mike McDonald. This project, uh, this uh, portion of 6th Street, is part of the uh, Cadence development, uh, commonly referred to now as 615 Metro. 
including the former Armed Forces uh, Bank property and the Commander's Inn property. Um, as part of the development, they are combining uh, where the Commander's Inn uh, once sat with where the bank property used to be, and in doing so, need to vacate uh, what was uh, 6th Street. And so that process is before the Commission. Um, there were some utility signups that had to happen, so I'm going to turn that over to Mike McDonald to speak just briefly about the process and then uh, go forward from there. Hello, Mr. McDonald. How are you doing? You're on mute. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mr. McDonald, if you can hear us. You're still on mute. There you go. <laughs> he's not, but he's not coming through. He's not on mute anymore, so... It's not picking up, Mike. Okay, I'll, I'll just go forward. Um, it's pretty, um, pretty simple. So when we vacate a street, um, utilities have the right or must sign off on that process. So as we worked with Cadence on getting the streets, uh, 6th Street vacated, uh, we had to make sure that there were no considerations for sanitary sewer, the water department, AT&T, AT&T Fiber, and Kansas Gas. Um, we have resolved all of those issues, so the item is before you tonight to finalize the vacation of 6th Street between the north line of Cheyenne Street and the south line of Metropolitan Avenue as part of the Cadence development in the area. Okay. Um, any questions or comments from my fellow commissioners on this um, subject? The, uh, on the vacation of 6th Street. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if there are no questions or comments, I'll accept the motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, this is the okay. water city attorney. I didn't, I didn't, guess I didn't catch if there were other list requests or there were any members of the public that wanted to speak. No. Okay. Two members of the public just came in, but I don't think they want to comment on this particular item, do they? Or I don't believe so. Okay. All right. Um, so we have a motion, and I believe Commissioner Wilson seconded it. Did do you have that? Um, did you get a second? I didn't hear. He may okay. have. I didn't hear it. I apologize. Can I have a second, Commissioner Wilson? Yes, I second it, Commissioner Wilson. Okay. Thank All right. You. There's a motion and a second to close the public hearing. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Commissioner Bowder. No, it's froze. Can't, I need, no. I can't, uh, is that, do I have an aye, Commissioner Bowder? Because we couldn't hear you. There, I heard her, I think. Yeah. Say it again. Wait. Uh. <laughs> okay, I got a, I got an eye from Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Bowder, can I get an eye from you, please? Take the problem. Yeah. Okay. okay, I see it. Okay. Commissioner Price, an eye. An eye is the mayor vote eye. The ayes have it. The vote is five to zero. The motion carries. So we have closed the public hearing, and so the um, we have a first consideration of the the ordinance. And Mr. Kramer, are you gonna? Do we just do we just need to consider what you just explained? Right, right? to put this on first consideration. Yeah, right. I have no nothing further to add okay. on this item. Any questions or comments from my uh, from commissioners in, in terms of uh, putting this on first consideration? Just one quick question. I don't know if Mr. McDonald's still here. Did he have any other comments that Mr. Kramer did not cover? And maybe he's already taken off. <laughs> uh oh. I I think I'm on uh, you're on on a, on a microphone now. You are. Uh, I think our city manager did a fine job of covering <laughs> that. Uh, the utility companies it was much more complicated than we normally see. Uh, we worked with the utility companies and the developer to reach uh, quite equitable arrangements between all the parties. So we're uh, comfortable to move forward, certainly on first consideration. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for comments from uh, fellow city commissioners? And I am going to go completely around the horn. Just I know if, if we get a consensus at three, I'd just like to be able to weigh in, uh, have all the commissioners weigh in. So uh, do we have a consensus? And I'm going to begin with Commissioner Wilson. Yes. Commissioner Bowder. Yes. Commissioner Leonhard. 
Commissioner Preisinger? Yes. And I, as the mayor, yes. I want to move forward. So we've given <clears throat> a, we have given an approval on this first consideration. So we'll look forward to a second consideration and a, and a motion sometime in the next uh, next meeting or two. Next is the um, consider amendment to community development block grant annual action plan 2019-2020 and we have to go through the same procedure because we have to open and then we'll close a public hearing. Do I have a motion to open a public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion and a second to open a public hearing on considering an amendment to the CDBG annual action plan. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger. Aye. And I as the mayor vote aye. The ayes have it five to zero. So the motion carries and so we are now in a public hearing to consider this uh, agenda item. Mr. Kramer? I'm gonna turn this okay, over sorry. to Julie Hurley, yeah. the Director of Planning and Roger. Community Development. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. This uh, is to, as you said, amend our CDBG Annual Action Plan to account uh, and allocate our CARES Act funding. This is our second allocation that we received through our CDBG program in the amount of $119,897. Uh, we are proposing to allocate $108,897 to our public service agencies and $11,000 uh, will go to administration of the grant. Um, we, just to kind of cover our, our thought process and how we're allocating this, our public service agencies have all seen a pretty dramatic uptick in the number of clients they're serving and have already utilized all or most of the funds they have already received from their first allocation. Um, previously, we did allocate money for some business grants. Uh, we allocated 101,000. So far, we've only uh, distributed 22,500 of that, so we still have quite a bit of funds remaining for business grants and really felt that the uh, public service agencies uh, were the best place to allocate these funds and getting those monies directly out to uh, the folks who most need that. So. Uh, the resolution uh, to adopt and authorize the um, amendment to the annual action plan is attached. And if you have any questions, I can answer those for you. Any, any questions or comments from commissioners? So I have a question in terms of the second allocation. And you did explain that we had, I think it was about 201,000, didn't we? And, and, and we allocated about 100,000 to the small businesses. Yep. But, and they've taken advantage of it to the to the tune of about 22,000. So the delta between 22,000 and 100,000 have have we already what are we going to do with do we know what we're going to do with that that delta? It's still available for the small for the business grants um, and we had previously put a deadline on those okay. um, thinking that we'd have a little bit more demand for that. Sure. So we are going to re-advertise that and get the okay. information back out there so that the businesses are aware that we still have those funds. Okay. Um, and really try and get those utilized since we do still have about 76, 77,000 still available. Okay, and so this 119,000 that we're, that we're um, discussing tonight and we'll take it to first consideration mm -hmm. is an, addition, an additional to the, like the community service organizations. Yep, for, right? the, uh, for the service providers, so, so right. Catholic Charities, right. uh, the okay. Community of Faith, and Salvation Army. Okay, I got it, I understand. Any questions or comments from my fellow commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the uh, public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Gowder. There's a motion and a second to close the public hearing. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Uh, Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger? Aye. And I, as the mayor, vote aye. The ayes have it, five to zero. Motion carries, so we've closed the public hearing. And so what we have to do now is to go to first consideration. It's a motion. No, it's a motion, yes. Yeah, we're gonna adopt, it's a motion. So 
that's where we are now. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion on this particular agenda item. Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, adopt resolution B-2266, the amendment to the CDBG annual action plan of 2019 and 2020. Second, Commissioner Bowder. Um, there's a motion in the second. Um, did we, did the second part of that motion get in terms of approving the submission, do we have to do that too, or? It, it's, it's in the resolution, okay, so okay. it's really right. not necessary. Um, okay, so there's a motion and a second to go ahead and uh, act on this particular uh, agenda item. So we are going to begin voting on the motion with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger? Aye. And I as the mayor vote aye. The ayes have it. Five to zero. Motion carries. So we've uh, adopted uh, the resolution B-2266. Thank you. Next is the um, bids under bids, contracts, and agreements. Consider bids for uniform rental contract. Mr. Kramer, who's going to cover that? Uh, that'll be Brandon Mills, our Deputy Finance Director. Okay. Hello, Mr. Mills. How are you doing? Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Brandon Mills, your Deputy Finance Director. Before you are the results of the 2020 uniform bids. Uh, these uniforms are used by various city departments, including parks, wastewater, solid waste, and streets. The uniforms ensure that the city employees are readily identifiable to the public and, uh, and staff. Staff recommends that the city commission accept the bid for uniform services to ACE Imageware in the um, annual amount not to exceed $28,185.04 for a three-year term. Okay, this, this is a, a good program, uh, pretty straightforward. Any questions or comments from commissioners on this agenda item? Uh, Mr. Mills, this says it's a uniform rental bid. In fact, is it a rental or do we just buy them? Surely no one turns these back in at the end of a year or two years, do they? These are, uh, Commissioner, these are rentals. Um, essentially what happens is um, they're, the employees will turn them in every week. Um, they'll get washed and as they deteriorate, they'll be replaced. So each, um, each employee will receive a laundered shirt and laundered pair of jeans. So it's, it's literally you take years off, they're laundered and they're brought Oh, they do the laundry too. Right. I think any of the commissioners need some of those clothes. <laughs> pair of blue jeans. City manager might. But, um, yeah, it's a good program. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I mean, this is my third year on the commission. I don't remember. It's come up every every year, every two or three years, because, I so mean, it's good. So this one we're doing in a three-year plan. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that's why. Okay. Okay, any questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the bids for the uniform rental contract and award it to Ace Imageware, Kansas City, Missouri, in the amount of $28,185.04. Is there a second? Commissioner Leonhard, I second. Okay, a motion and a second on this particular agenda item. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger. Aye. And I as the mayor vote aye. The ayes have it. Motion carries five to zero. So we've uh, approved the award of the Employee Uniform Services to Ace Imageware in the amount of $28,185.04. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep, you too. Next is uh, consider design services contract with the Finnis for 2020-2021 Pavement Management Program. Turn this over to Mike McDonald, Public Works Director. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, this is a continuation of our uh, annual payment management program. Uh, this will be a program that is, uh, was reviewed with uh, the Commission earlier this year where we uh, were plotting how to spend the additional funds that the uh, City Commission approved beginning of this year, uh, about $2 million per year. Uh, we uh, had the finish engineer.
engineers prepare uh, a kind of a three-year outlook, and we focused on the first and second year uh, of that program with the commission. We expect the uh, work to be similar in scope and size as what we are accomplishing this year, and it's broken down broadly uh, in the policy report uh, for a city uh, city parking lot repair, uh, a large mill and overlay component. Uh, other payment management plan actions, which would be like the large uh, scraping project and such, and then uh, some funds set aside to design uh, for the year 2022. Uh, the uh, contract uh, with the finish will have them prepare a recommended uh, streets based on our pre previous review with them uh, in this year. We will review those streets with the city commission and finalize those and go into design. Uh, we expect uh, that we should be out for bids uh, earlier uh, in 2021 than this year. Uh, I think the COVID got in the way and some other uh, some other things. Uh, we know uh, we know how important this program is, and we will pursue it uh, diligently. Uh, the proposal from Affinis uh, is eighty-eight thousand five hundred dollars for this design. Uh, we believe that we will be doing uh, all of the uh, inspection of, with city forces uh, as we are doing this year. That's a good rundown, Mr. McDonald. Any questions or comments from Mr. McDonald from my fellow commissioners? I do. I do have just one question, and I I know the road program pavement management program is going well this year, and. Um, Particularly, I think we've had a lot of cooperation with the weather. The one question I had, though, we're do, are we doing one parking lot sometime this fall in the in, in the downtown? Is that still set set to go, Mr. McDonald? Yes, uh, that is the parking lot next to the uh, former Youth Achievement Center. Right. That is part of the current contract, and the uh, concrete. The uh, contractor is a local firm, and he said they've been so busy, okay. they have actually contemplated uh, subcontracting out the entire work to another firm uh, to do that. And we've uh, indicated we'd like somebody to get started on it pretty quick. Uh, being as it is concrete, they can work a little later in the year than the asphalt, but they, uh, uh, that is part of this year's uh, contract. Do you have any concerns of it being subcontracted out? The, the primary contractor would be responsible for the for the work of the subcontractor, right? Yeah, uh, I would like to see the uh, the firm that bid it uh, do the work. Uh, we're pushing them to do that. Okay. Uh, a complete uh, subletting of that contract. I'm not even sure that is totally allowed in our specifications. Okay. <laughs> to tell you the truth. Sure. Okay. Uh, but we are uh, we're expecting them to begin work uh, uh, by now, actually. Okay. They haven't. Okay, that's why I thought I'd ask the question. Any comments or questions um, on this agenda item? If not, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the design services contract with the Finnis Corporation uh, to support the 2021 pavement management program in the amount of 80 $88,500. For a second? Commissioner Wilson, I second it. Okay, there's a motion and a second for this particular agenda item. We're going to begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Preisinger? Aye. And I, as the mayor, vote aye. The ayes have it, five to zero. Motion carries, so we've approve the design services contract with the Finnis Corporation. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Next is first consideration ordinance, Child Care Center, 220 Spruce Street. Uh, Julie Hurley again. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. This is a request for a special use permit <coughs> to allow operation of a child care center at 220 Spruce Street, which is a uh, residential property. Uh, child care centers are allowed in residential districts with issuance of a special use permit. This applicant did previously have a home daycare at their residence at 1922 Fifth Avenue, which was damaged by fire uh, earlier this year. And so they have since relocated to 220 Spruce Street and intend to uh, continue with the daycare operation. Uh, they do have a license through the state of Kansas to care for a maximum of 12 children at the location. Uh, the Planning Commission did consider this at their September 14th meeting and voted unanimously to recommend approval. So if you have any questions, I can answer those for you now. 
uh, pretty straightforward as far as I'm concerned. Any questions or comments from fellow commissioners? Um, if not, this is, this is a, an agenda item which we need to reach a consensus on first consideration. So I am going to go around the horn and begin with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Well, we, we're, we're not doing it's not a motion, it's just a consideration. So yes or I'm sorry. Um, I, did I, if I, I if I ask for a motion, I'm sorry. We need to have a consensus. So let's let's back up and uh, actually got the let's back up and go with Commissioner Wilson. Are you are you good to go? Do you are you good on moving forward with first consideration on this agenda item? Well, yes, I did. Just went to inform the commission that this is my mother's day here. Okay. Just to disclose this. So that's all. Sure. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Commissioner Bowder. Yes, I'm fine with that. Okay, Commissioner Leonhard? Yes. Commissioner Preisinger? Yes. And I as the mayor, yes. I want to move forward and uh, go with and I'm good to go with this first consideration uh, for this agenda item. Next is rezoning. First uh, consideration ordinance rezoning 619 South 4th Street from OBD to GBD. Great, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. As you said, this is a request to rezone the property at 619 South 4th Street from Office Business District to General Business District. Uh, this is the site of the former American Family Insurance Office that you're probably familiar with, just a couple of blocks south of the county courthouse right on 4th Street. Uh, the property has been vacant for about five to six years, um, being as it is located directly on 4th Street, which is a major uh, arterial street uh, commercial zoning is uh, considered an appropriate use for this location. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Planning Commission again considered this at their September 14th meeting and voted unanimously to recommend approval. If you have any questions, I can answer those for you. Okay. Any questions or comments from commissioners? Well, uh, I know it was American Family. Before that, it was a gas station for... Uh, Mr. Bowder will remember I mean, when we went to junior high, there was Leighton's <laughs> gas station, was it not? Uh, yes, it was. And did it, was it not classified correctly then? I mean, how did it get to office and now it's going back to general? Yeah. You know, I'm not totally sure. We have a lot of these locations around the city. Um, when zoning was first introduced in the 1970s, um, the zoning that was applied at that time doesn't necessarily correspond with what the uses ended up being, and so I can't really speak to how those transpired over the last 40 years or so, um, but at, at some point it did become an office zoning um, with that office use there, and I'm not sure. I know it had had some previous uses under the gas station, I think a couple of other things prior to the uh, the insurance office, um, but this the but the general business district zoning is really getting it more in line with what would be an appropriate uh, zoning for the particular site. And do, uh, they don't, the applicant doesn't have to state what type of business they just want it as general business. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Good questions. Um, Mr. Kramer, we have two citizens in the, and this is the last really business before we get to the consent agenda. Um, okay. All right, um, so we are, there are no further questions or comments from uh, commissioners. We uh, are going to go around the horn and to see whether uh, we are going to place an ordinance, this ordinance on first consideration to approve the rezoning request for 619 4th Street from OBD to GBD. And we are going to begin um, with Commissioner Leonhard. Yes. Okay, Commissioner Bowder. Yes, I'm good with this. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Commissioner Preisinger? Yes. And I, as the mayor, say yes. Let's move forward. So we'll be able, we have a consensus to place uh, this ordinance on first consideration. We'll see it in another couple of weeks or whenever it comes before us. Um, just, so that ends all the items up until the consent agenda. And I'm going to turn that over to Commissioner. Leonhard. 
I move to approve claims for September 19th, 2020 through October 9th, 2020 in the amount of $2,319,325.31, net amount for payroll number 20, effective September 25th, 2020, in the amount of $323,321.04, includes police and fire pension in the amount of $11,839.36, and net amount for payroll number 21, effective October 9th, 2020, in the amount of $335,509.06, no police and fire pension. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion and a second on the consent agenda. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Uh, Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Preisinger. Aye. And ayes the mayor vote aye. The ayes have it five to zero. So we've approved the uh, motion carries. So we've approved the consent agenda for today's city commission meeting. Um, so that I'm going to go around the horn. And as I normally do, I'm going to begin with the city manager, Mr. Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just three quick items for the commission as a reminder to the public. The city will host a trunk or treat event on Saturday, October 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Sports Field. Um, we have over uh, 30 vendors uh, signed up. Um, the city will have uh, city staff out there, some of our police officers out there, park staff uh, to ensure a fun and safe evening for our families uh, to enjoy uh, the Halloween holiday. Uh, Veterans Day Parade Committee, just a brief update. Uh, staff met again last week with the Veterans Day Parade Committee. And as a reminder, that is the committee that runs the parade. Um, the city assists with logistics and some other items. Uh, that parade is a go um, for Wednesday, November 11th. Uh, it's going to be a scaled down event. Um, items such as uh, multiple fire trucks, uh, marching bands will all be missing from this year's parade. Um, and the number of entrants is down uh, greatly. Uh, I think there's a hope for a renewed focus on veterans and active duty military. Uh, things like the reviewing stand will not take place this year, um, but we still will have that parade to honor our veterans. And then finally, uh, as we wrap up the 2020 roads uh, project, pavement management project, we still have about a fourth of the program left. We have large projects on Osage from Esplanade to Broadway, Tonganoxy Drive from Shenandoah to Candlewood, Potawatomi from Esplanade to Broadway are just a couple of the large remaining projects left. So we hope the um, public has appreciated the work uh, of the pavement management program for this year. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Leonhard, I'm gonna go to you first. Yes, Commissioner Leonhard, uh, today is the last day uh, to register to vote and you can still do that. Go on ksvotes.org um, and the mail-in ballots uh, will go out tomorrow, October 14th. Um, and advanced voting does start tomorrow. You can go to the county clerk's office. Uh, they advise you to call first, um, which is 6840421. Um, and that's going to be uh, starting tomorrow at the county clerk's office, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. November 2nd, you can vote until noon. And then, of course, November 3rd, the polls will open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, if you do not want to mail your ballot back in through the Postal Service, there are five uh, ballot drop-off boxes. Uh, Lumber City Hall, uh, Lumber County Courthouse, Lansing Community Center, Baser Community Library, and Tonganoxy Annex. So, go vote. Thank you. Can I ask a question, Com Commissioner Leonhard? For, for the uh, the early voting, I, I know it's going to be in the you know the county. Is it going to be in the upstairs office, or are they going to do it uh, downstairs? Do you know? Uh, well, I talked to Janet today, and tomorrow they're going to do it upstairs okay. right now, the county okay. clerk's office. That's okay. why they advise you to try to call first before you show up. Okay. I got it. Thank you, um, Commissioner Wilson. Anything for the. Uh, for the for your fellow commissioners and the public yes i definitely want to encourage everyone to go out to vote echoing uh commissioner uh Leonard. and i know a lot of times individuals like to 
vote strictly party, but I encourage you to study the character of each candidate and look at their track record and vote for the person who's going to represent our community, <clears throat> our state, as well as the United States. So I encourage you, go vote. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Thank you. Commissioner Preisinger. Um, <clears throat> we all have seen the, uh, the news over the last few weeks. We know that no one is immune from the COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, every reputable scientist, every reputable medical uh, professional that is involved with the COVID-19 research and studies recommend a couple things that would uh, diminish the spread of this disease, uh, specifically washing your hands, washing your face, and wearing masks. Uh, please, please start wear, wear your mask when you're in public, uh, when you're close to other people. Uh, you know, the uh, prognostication is over the winter, this may get even worse than what it is now. Uh, it's not a political statement. It's taking care of yourself and your fellow man. Please consider following the guidelines by the CDC, National Institute of Health. Uh, even the president recommends wearing masks. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Preisinger. Commissioner Bowder? Yes, um, you stole my thunder a little bit, but <laughs> I just came back from Minnesota. And uh, um, the trip on the way up there and back. My son had COVID over two months ago and he still has after effects. Some people have only mild, mm -hmm. mild issues with it. Others, as I know, some are in the hospital now. I know some people who are in the hospital with it. It's not always the, the case of the mild, being mild. He was sick for literally over a month where he couldn't work and couldn't get out of bed and he's a younger man. And uh, mm -hmm. I just, to encourage everyone to wear your mask. I know some of you don't want to. I think, uh, you know, if you don't care about yourself, at least think about the other people you're exposing to this because not everybody gets by with a pass. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And I will just echo and support the comments of Commissioner Bowder and Commissioner Preisinger in terms of fighting the spread of COVID-19 and and the, the prognostications are that with the colder weather coming, people being indoors, that it, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to get any better. So we've got to minimize that risk. And I uh, just echo and support everything that my two fellow commissioners said with respect to fighting COVID-19 and implementing those three or four public health measures that aren't rocket science, but certainly uh, can uh, save people from contracting the disease and in the final analysis, save lives. And I also would like to thank Commissioner Wilson and Commissioner Leonhard for their comments about the voting and uh, which starts tomorrow and uh, culminates on the 3rd of November on the general election day. So are there any other comments or questions? If not, I will um, consider a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner Bowden. There's a motion and a second to adjourn uh, this evening's city commission meeting. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Preisinger? Aye. And ayes the mayor vote ayes. The ayes have it. Motion carries. And we are adjourned.